Confronting stone, whatever scale, is, just, is a much more physical exercise than uh, working in clay or certainly two-dimensional work. There's more risk and I tend to do direct carving. It's both premeditated and then very much in the moment because I'm working directly rather than from a model, not knowing exactly where I'm going to go and, and facing that challenge. My interest in building forms, you know, had been there for a very long time. I actually did my first stone sculpture when I was 15. The issue became acquiring a technical capacity. Obviously there's a large difference between working additively in clay versus attractively in stone. It took a while to rewire myself. There's this nucleus, this kernel that I start with, it's really just about this um, preconceived effect and the whole piece will grow from that. This form right here, I probably redrew that 15 times. I'm trying to present myself with, with problems that I haven't encountered before. There are certainly times where I have to put aside a sculpture for a week or two to think about where I'm about to go. It's sort of like climbing, you know, you get to a point and you have to assess your situation before you make a critical move. I grew up outside of Boston in Sudbury, Massachusetts, and I went to college in North Carolina at Davidson College. I focused on English literature. After I got that degree, I went back to ceramics in ceramic restoration of pre-Columbian pottery. After about 10 years, it morphed into stone, and I moved to New Mexico uh, in 1996. It takes a little bit more overhead, obviously, to get into stonework than clay. I mean, you can do you know, obviously you can, you can make an ashtray as a five-year-old, but it's sort of hard to make a stone sculpture as a five-year-old. I think of my work less conceptually than in terms of a series of interrelationships to achieve a synthesis and a harmony in 360 degrees. I wanted a fairly stark contrast between like this straightforward geometry with cylinders, for example, here, and then this very rough organic edge, and then it was gonna grow out of that. I felt like what was missing was a syntax and a, and a grammar. You know, there is some kind of rational underpinning. Negative space certainly contributes to incorporating a lightness in the, in the overall form. It's more about communicating with, you know, with the opposite side of the form. There's certainly a post-cubist quality to my work, and it takes a while, I would say, to sort of absorb what's going on in a lot of my pieces. Stone lacks in tensile strength, so you can't have cantilevered forms. Steel allows me to uh, cantilever into space. A dream commission would be, you know, in a high profile urban setting where people are experiencing it on a daily basis. My work would definitely have to be scaled up for that. Part of the essence of my work is this merging of fluidity and geometry, trying to get the male-female forms or energies to intermingle, you know, like a yin-yang.